This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. As we enter the season of Advent, we are reminded that Advent is based on celebrating Jesus and preparing for him in three different ways. The obvious first way is by celebrating his birth with Christmas gatherings and gift exchanges, trees and nativity scenes, cheerful carols, and meaningful worship. Secondly, Advent is also a time when we consider his second coming into the world. The Gospel of Mark gives us a vivid example of how this might happen. Jesus says the following to his disciples, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. But of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. That's quite the image. In speaking this way, Jesus is affirming that the coming of the kingdom will not be on the account of what we do, but rather it will only be by the intervention of God. While we can be sure that the Lord will come again, we just don't know when. There are many examples in history of people who have thought that they figured out when the kingdom was coming. It's the end of the world, they proclaimed. They'd read the signs and they knew that it was now. But in the end, they were wrong because the proclamation of now is up to God alone. Therefore, we must always be alert and be faithful. The Lord will come again. Of that you can be sure. Will you be ready? With these two ways of getting ready for Jesus in mind, there is a third way in which in which we must prepare for Advent. We must prepare ourselves to receive the Son of Man into our hearts today as Lord and Savior. Not just as a baby 2,000 years ago, and not just at some future time, but today. While we didn't have anything to do with his birth, and we can't make him come again, we are the ones who hold the key to our own hearts. We are the ones who decide whether or not Christ will rule our lives and give us strength. Each Advent, I'm reminded of a famous picture by Holman Hunt entitled Christ Knocking at the Door. Perhaps you've seen it. It shows Christ standing at the door with his hand in the knocking position. He's holding a lantern because he came to bring light into the world. Now, the interesting thing about this picture is that there is no knob or handle on the outside of the door. It can only be opened from the inside. Well, one day as a young boy was looking at this picture, he asked his mother what it was all about. Patiently, she explained the picture to him, and she ended by saying that we are on the inside, and we are the only ones who can open the door for Christ to enter. After looking at that picture for quite some time, the boy turned to his mother, and he asked, Did he ever get in? Did Christ ever get into your heart? Advent is the season which seeks to prepare us to answer that question for ourselves. Advent reminds us that Christ came at Christmas, that Christ is coming again in glory, and that Christ is here today. God promised to send his Son, and he kept that promise. We too must keep our promise to let him into our lives in such a way that it affects all that we do. In the book of Isaiah, we hear of God being our source of strength in times of despair. The Israelites are in dire straits as they sit in exile in Babylon. What does their future hold? Will they see their homeland again? And if they don't see it again, what condition will it be in? These are all questions that weigh heavily on the hearts of God's people, and they're questions that only God can answer. It's imperative that if the people want to survive this ordeal, if they want to find the answers to their questions, they need to turn to their Lord for strength. They need to turn everything over to him and trust that he is in control and he has those answers. For we are the clay and he is the potter. We are all the work of God's creative hand. It can be extremely difficult to trust in God as our source of strength because what it signifies is that we are no longer in control or maybe we never were in control. 
and that feeling can make us feel helpless and isolated. But time and time again, our God proves that he is the Almighty and that he is the one that can calm our spirit when our blood starts to boil up, when frustration sets in, when we become confused or perplexed, or when we just don't have the answers. About four years ago, my dog Waylon got loose from our backyard and was wandering away from our home. I set out to look for him, but I came up short. It was extremely cold outside as it was a clear Minnesota winter night, and I combed the neighborhood for hours going hoarse, yelling my dog's name. When I got to the community park, I collapsed on the bench. I looked up at the stars, and then I just turned it over to God. I said, Lord, I have no idea where Waylon is. I just don't know what to do. It's all in your hands now. Help me to understand what comes next. I went to bed that night worried that I'd never see that mud again. Early the next morning, I called the dog pound, and sure enough, animal control had picked him up. I felt relief. Now, I realize that all stories don't turn out for the best. And my story very well could have ended on a sour note, but I was ready for that. For with my talk with God in the park, I was ready to deal with whatever situation was dealt me. Was he alive? Was he dead? Was he still missing? I didn't know. But I did know that there was an answer somewhere out there for me, one that I would have to wait for. And I prayed that God would give me the strength to wait it out, until those answers were revealed. God is our source of strength, the one we turn to when we are in a state of despair. But like that painting of Jesus outside the novelist's door, it is up to us to open the door to him and see the possibilities that abound when we invite him in and let him fuel our souls with his love and patience and never wavering grace. Jesus wants to actively be a part of our lives, guiding us and granting us that peace which passes all human understanding. So open the door to your heart this Advent and say to Christ, come on in. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.